Hello and welcome to Tuesday News Day, your number one resource for the entire week's worth of VR news. This is a 5K resolution all-in-one VR headset that's set to launch later this year, seemingly as a direct competitor to the Quest 2, and it's pretty sus, not gonna lie. Facebook and Oculus talk about some very Sword Art Online-esque possibilities in their future, as well as a new operating system, and some really awesome index updates. That and so much more, let's just get right into the news. So, starting off with the bad news, Facebook has announced that no Oculus Studio or Facebook-funded games will be shown at E3 this year. This kind of makes sense, as we do know about a few ongoing projects by Oculus Studio, like Lone Echo 2, Resident Evil 4 that was recently shown off, and of course, the accidentally confirmed Onward 2, as well as Ubisoft's long-announced projects of Assassin's Creed and Splinter Cell VR. And it's worth mentioning that Facebook Connect 8, the annual conference for developers and others, where Facebook normally makes its huge announcements, really isn't that far away usually taking place in September of every year. So I can understand Oculus Studio not wanting to blow their load early when they have their own event. However, this is, of course, a little disappointing. It feels like we haven't gotten many big games recently, and the summer doesn't look much better, to be honest. While there are some vaguely announced games coming sometime in the future, there aren't any releases coming extremely soon. Plenty of other projects are looking pretty good, though, and I may be doing a showcase to show off some of these in the future if you guys want it. Real quick, before the juicy talk of neural interfaces and Oculus, a new headset has been announced by a Chinese company, Arpara, showing off a 5K combined resolution headset with micro OLED displays. Two versions were announced, one being a PC VR headset using uh, no load tracking, because we all know that's great, launching for $599 later this year, and an all-in-one standalone headset rocking similar hardware and inside-out tracking, which seems like the better option. I saw this spur up on Reddit and Twitter with some traction, but it comes with no load tracking, which I'm not a huge fan of. The precision just isn't close to the level of base stations or Oculus inside out tracking. And the official website is also down. I don't know, Chief. Yeah, the displays sound awesome, micro OLEDs are sweet. Just this whole thing seems a little sketchy, but I'll keep my eyes out on it. And if you're really excited for this, I'd curb my enthusiasm if I were you. Chinese headsets with no low tracking is something that I've seen over and over again, and I've had pretty bad experiences with every single one of them, no matter how good the display is. Now, onto this interesting document dialogue between Mark Zuckerberg and Andrew Bosworth, VP of Facebook Reality Labs. It's pretty common for Boz or Bosworth to do these Ask Me Anythings on Instagram, where a ton of information is usually given regarding Oculus current projects or future projects. This one was a little different though and pretty special. Mark Zuckerberg joined him and the topics were far more advanced than just questions and answers about Quest updates or Quest Pros. Instead, the pair talked about spatial audio, physical presence within VR, a new reality operating system, then most excitingly using neural interfaces within VR to pretty much control VR entirely using devices that read your brain activity, and subjectively the worst part, advertisements are coming to your VR headset. Let's start from the top. There's actually a ton of really awesome pertinent information here that I think you'll enjoy. So starting off, spatial audio and feeling physical presence within VR. Now I'm not talking about actually feeling things, but instead about creating an environment that stimulates audio visually in such a manner that objects and people feel like they have presence. This comes about because of a fundamental issue with how remote work and really business and school in general has been handled over the past year and a half. A massive shift towards Zoom calls or video calls in general for businesses may have gotten the job done, but if you've done enough of these, either for school or work, you'll notice this phenomenon where your memories kind of bleed together. It's hard to remember when you learned or talked about what, and Mark Zuckerberg says this is because typical video calls lack the usual details and identifiers that you normally take in subconsciously in your environment when you're actually in the environment. Right now, virtual school school or work is just staring at a screen and a video and can lack a lot of engagement. Apparently, Facebook have been working on and are close to releasing a service that brings meetings into VR in a way that hasn't been done before, specifically noting the importance of really good spatial audio, or audio that has perceived depth and direction, and physically feeling like you're in a place. This statement caught me off guard though, Boz saying, quote, you physically feel like you're in a place, even when you're not actually physically together. It's really cool, end quote. Supposedly, this is already being demoed by Facebook and it's pretty close as in coming somewhat soon. Sounds interesting to 
to me, but given Facebook's track record of physical presence and VR social platforms, I'm going to take this one with a grain of salt, but still excited. I want to get onto neural interfaces and ads, so quickly I'll touch on this new AR operating system that's being worked on. There are basically three goals for a good augmented reality device. One, it has to be powerful, powerful enough to render graphics and games and do productivity applications and track and do all the things AR should do. Two, it can't get hot, meaning you can't just slap the biggest, baddest processor you have on it because, well, it's on your face. And three, it has to be very power efficient. It has to last all day. These are incredible technical hurdles, and one way Facebook is doing it is by completely building their own operating system around AR's needs and also building their own custom silicon, akin to Apple silicon. I think this was mentioned to represent and display the depth Facebook is going all the way down to their own silicon to get this right. And it's a necessary thing to build the platform they're wanting to build. Facebook has talked AR quite a bit in the past, and I'm expecting quite a bit more talk regarding it this September at Facebook Connect. Now, finally, neural interfaces and ads. This conversation started with questions about Apple's recent announcement of gesture-based movements via an Apple Watch, a system that I could personally see being used in Apple's long-awaited AR and VR devices. This tech is pretty cool, but Facebook actually owns a company, Control Labs, that does exactly this, and they've shown off that technology multiple times. Then, this whole talk took a full dive, almost literally. Talking about brain-computer interfaces and neural interfaces, it's one of the many times I've seen Mark Zuckerberg get really enthused about neural interfaces. You can tell it's been on his mind for quite some time. Zuckerberg talks about hands and controlling those hands within VR, and how important the feedback between your hands, controller, headset, and software are to making an experience immersive. Then the question came up, what if you could learn to control that set of VR hands the same way you can control your normal hands, but independently? Calling it the holy grail of neural interfaces. And also mentioning that the team working on this had this question in mind, how can we understand what you're thinking? Now, this was quickly dismissed as Mark pushed that thought process away with, quote, we don't want to read the person's mind. You're not trying to understand what they're thinking. What you're trying to do is give the person an ability to have their brain send signals to the rest of the body about how this works, end quote. Now, Facebook being able to essentially, and not in a sci-fi way, but in a very real sense, read people's minds is a scary thought to say the least. But we'll stay grounded with what they had to say specifically, because while this isn't coming soon, it's something that is being actively worked Worked on. Zuckerberg talks about neuroplasticity, or in other words, the brain's innate ability to rewire itself, essentially when damaged or when learning. One example, if a part of your brain is damaged, sometimes your brain will, in a sense, rewire that function to a different part of the brain after significant training, of course, or learning a new language even. It's connecting a whole different set of words to objects and actions that were previously connected to something else. Neuroplasticity is incredibly interesting and one of humankind's strongest attributes, not to say it's exclusive to humans, of course. Mark Zuckerberg directly makes this connection with VR, with quote, if one pathway gets damaged, your brain can kind of get rewired, but you can train those extra pathways to control, for example, a second set of virtual hands, so that you can just kind of think and like, down the line, you have your virtual hands are typing and controlling what you're doing in VR and AR. And then you don't need to actually have a physical controller or anything like that because that's awesome, end quote. It's admittedly far off and an ambitious project to say the least. But just like Valve and Gabe Newell and Elon Musk, they are all working on the same thing. So is Big Blue. With the long-term goals of being able to control VR entirely with your brain in a very similar fashion of sort of online, you plug in the neural interface and control the entire visual presence of yourself, giving actions like typing or fighting with your mind. No more controllers or buttons at all. In the short term, with help of tactile devices like controllers or a stylus, a neural interface can aid in control within VR. But like I said, in the long term, the goal is to do away with those control methods entirely to full dive, essentially. Of course, that's a future I'm both excited about and terrified at the same time. I think if that does become our reality, then that marks a fundamental change in humanity moving forward, a virtual reality humanity where you teleport to work or games through your neural interface, and physical disabilities are entirely irrelevant. It's scary as well, as it already feels like Facebook and advertisers have a proverbial direct line into our brains as is. I can't 
imagine what things would be like when there's actually a direct line to our brains. But that gets on to the final topic, ads within VR. They've already come to the Oculus app in a non-obtrusive way, but they'll be coming to your headset before you know it. And apparently from Boz, quote, you won't hate it as much as your question suggests you might, end quote. Obviously, advertising is a huge business for Facebook, arguably the business for the company. So of course, this seems inevitable, and it seems Facebook is trying to be non-obtrusive with ads, but it's a slippery, slippery slope. The same technology that interprets your actions will regurgitate that same invaluable information that will be worth a fortune to investors that will literally want to know what you're thinking. Boz says ads will lower software costs, hardware costs, and connect people with products and services that they may be interested in. But I'm still a little skeptical. I don't mind targeted advertisements. I do mind, however, who has access to my data and who's profiting off of it and how much of a say I have where my information is going. A really interesting piece from a friend of the channel and host of the Voices of VR podcast, Kent Bai, says this, quote, The experience of VR ads is a red herring. The real issue is the digital colonization of our bodies and attention via real-time recording and analysis of physiological reactions into biometric, psychographic profiles that can undermine our rights to mental privacy, agency, and identity, end quote. Really well said, and there's kind of a lot to unpack there in that small little tweet reply. And while I know it's not a sexy issue to bring up, it's something I urge you to keep your mind on and eye on over time. Now onto some great news. Gabe Newell has blessed all of my Aussie friends because now the Valve Index is going to be purchasable in Australia starting in August. Oddly enough, the place to buy it is not through Steam, but instead through EB Games, pretty much GameStop, but down under. And if you want one in Australia, it's going to cost you a pretty 1899 Australian buckaroos for the whole kit. Ouch. Uh, I guess that beats import fees, maybe? I'm still personally on the fence about shelling out that much money for an index kit right now, as it's two years old, and we have no idea if any sort of announcement will be coming from Valve within the next few months. It could, or it could totally Probably not but I suppose you have until August to make that decision. Sorry for no meme break or question of the week this week. YouTube slaps my hand if I make these videos too long, so I had to cut these short. I will be streaming after this on Twitch, and I have a really cool announcement to make if you want a free quest too. Join in my Discord for more information on that. Thank you to all of my Patreon supporters, especially my Omegas. I couldn't do any of this without you. Don't forget to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out.